Today, I'm going to tell you about a battle that you probably know very little about. I'm going to tell you about a battle that more than any other changed the Scottish-English border. I'm going to tell you about a battle that they say Scotland lost, but we know different. If you want to hear about that, then this is a video for you. Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi. If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then why not subscribe to my YouTube channel, Scotland History Tours. Oh, also click the notification bell to make sure you're notified every time there's a new video. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Have you ever been to Hexham Abbey? It's a really interesting place in a quaint Northumbrian town. In an ideal world, I would have taken you there to film this video. I was there last year when I was visiting Hadrian's Wall. Just checking in the defences. What's your favourite historical place to visit in England? Share it with the rest of the Scotland History Tours YouTube community in the comment section below. Honest, it'll be interesting for everyone. And hey, behave yourself. Anyway, I was in Hexham Abbey and there was a local lady giving information about the crypt, the link to the monastery and the Roman temple stones and all that kind of thing. It was really interesting. Then she starts banging on about how much of the abbey had been damaged when the Scots came down and invaded and looted and destroyed. Ay, 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 ay. I think you'll find it was the other way around, thought I, in my spontaneous partisan patriotism. And then I thought, oh aye, that'll have been David the First. Ha 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 ha, we Scots and you English folk in the north of England almost ended up in the same country, eh? Now obviously I didn't want to get involved in the whole constitutional debate, that would have been messy. Nobody wants to stir up that hornet's nest. Anyway, it's the 22nd of August, and on this day in 1138, the Scots and the English fought the Battle of the Standard. The Scots, under David I, had come south for what all the pundits had down as an easier way win. The jaws of victory were gaping open like a great white shark off the American holiday beaches. And just when the Scots thought it was safe to go back in the water, the English banged one in the back of the net. We lost, okay? Actually, I'm here to tell you that it wasn't as simple as that. In fact, it wasn't even as simple as the slightly more complex version I'm going to give you. There's a whole Game of Thrones style family feud in the background to this battle that I don't have time to cover. I must do another video about it at some point. I'm thinking I'll save it for the cold winter night. When I've done it, I'll put a white link up there for you to click for more detailed background information. Anyway, the short version is that David's sister had been married to the recently deceased Henry I of England. Now, David had sworn an oath to Henry promising to ensure that Henry and his sister's daughter, Matilda, took the English throne when Henry died. But her cousin Stephen had got to London and had himself crowned in her place. That led to the anarchy in England and David invaded England in support of his niece. Now, obviously it's more complicated than that and David didn't really do that much to press his niece's case, but that's for another day. Now, here's a map of the Scottish-English border. It was finally agreed around 100 years after the Battle of the Standard by David's great-great-grandson Alexander and Edward IV of England. At the date of the Battle of the Standard, borders were still in a state of flux. It was only David's great-granddad that had made Lothian and Borders part of Scotland a hundred years before. Galloway wasn't yet part of Scotland. The Hebrides weren't yet part of Scotland. Cumbria, Strathclyde, basically the Clyde down the Solway, had only recently become part of Scotland. And that wasn't rock-solid secure. David was still working on that. A lot was still at play. There was no inevitability about where the borders would end up. I've actually got a video about how Scotland got its borders, it's worth a watch. There will probably be a link at the end. Now, with those caveats and the state of flux of the borderlands in the medieval British Isles, let's say that the Scottish-English border was roughly where it is now, when David crossed and into the north of England. Now, in spite of his family heritage, David was the epitome of Norman kingship. But some of the folks that he took with him across the border were a bit more rough and ready. I told you that Galloway wasn't yet part of Scotland, but on this occasion the Galwegians had allied with the Scots. Apparently, David had problems keeping these wild men in check, and it was them who committed most of the looty, pillagey destruction that our guide in Hexham Abbey kept banging on about. 
Now, I'm sure they weren't the only guilty ones, but it was them who got the blame on the BBC News report. The English were appalled at their behaviour, murdering priests in churches, drinking blood of babies and not washing their hands after the toilet. It was appalling. The English painted this conflict as Christian against heathen, civilised against barbarian, populist trope against nationalist stereotype. In truth, it was a bog-standard medieval land grab. In some ways it was a family squabble. But the Archbishop of York declared it a holy war. He ordered the priests to join the English barons to go to war and to take holy relics, processional crosses and holy banners with them. And it was because of these banners placed in a central cart defended by the English that the battle gained its name, the Battle of the Standard. Now, King Stephen of England had his hands full with civil war and was too busy to come to the battle. You see, that's why Matilda should have been in charge in the first place. Women can multitask. Anyway, one of the English noblemen gave a speech to David I to try and convince him the error of his ways. The English nobleman's name was Robert the Bruce. No, not him, his great, 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 great granddad. Reports were that the battle was lost because the hairy, mental, unarmoured, ill-disciplined Galwegians insisted in charging first and were wiped out by the English armoured knights. <laughs> Is that scapegoat I can smell cooking in a barbecue? Or is it the smell of burning paper from a rigorous, thorough and transparent public inquiry? I don't know. I just know that there were heavy losses and we lost. Or did we? Here's the point of this video. This is what we agreed was roughly the Scottish-English border before the invasion. Here is the location of the battle at North Allerton in Yorkshire. If David had won that battle, the English King Stephen is still weak in England. David's niece Matilda is still making a play for the English throne. David is sworn to uphold that claim. That 20 year story hasn't played out yet, but where would the border have ended up? What would have been the balance of power in these islands? There's an argument for saying that outside Bannockburn, this was the most important battle in British history. The drama sells tickets. Now, David didn't win the battle, but the defeat wasn't so heavy that he went home and forgot about his ambitions. The Scots were still the power in the north of England, and David wasn't given up. The post-battle negotiated settlement was the Second Treaty of Durham. Now, here's the borders of David's land before he invaded and lost the Battle of the Standard. Here's the border of David's effective power after the Battle of the Standard. If I had to lose a battle, that's probably the way I'd like to lose it. Now, you might be wondering why the borders aren't the same now. I've actually got a couple of videos to help you understand that. One is David, the first king of Scotland. The other one is William the Lion and Scotland Lost. They're both in my playlist on the Canmore Kings. You might also want to check out my video, How Did Scotland Get Its Borders? Now, obviously, don't do that until you've liked and shared this video. I mean, dog is going to be a lot of my life. Cheerio and Rasta.